Senator Waters. Thanks very much, Mr Acting Deputy President. I rise to speak uh, in support of my bill, the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Amendment Retaining Federal Approval Powers Bill of 2012. Now, this is a crucial bill because it seeks to prevent this government or the next handing off its responsibility for our nationally significant environmental icons to state governments. Now, of course, this would fly in the face of 30 years of gradually increased Commonwealth um, protection for the environment. And I'm, I'm sure folk on both sides would remember that great intervention by then Prime Minister Bob Hawke, where he stepped in uh, after the Tasmanian government was prepared to dam the Franklin. Uh, and it went all the way to the High Court and it confirmed that the Commonwealth had a role in protecting nationally and internationally significant parts of our environment. That was a seminal moment. And yet it's that moment and the 30 years of environmental law that followed that is now at risk if this bill doesn't pass. Now, it warrants an examination of how we even got to this point. We've had John Howard's laws, the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act, uh, that came in in 2000, and they always had this little section in there that said the federal government can give away its approval powers to state governments. Uh, no one had ever used it before, and uh, common understanding was this would be a crazy idea, a risky idea, something that simply wouldn't happen which is why it came as such a shock to the environment movement and to anyone in the community who cared about protecting our environment that uh, in April of last year the Prime Minister, uh, a day after a meeting with the Business Council of Australia, announced that in fact she would be using these very provisions that John Howard put into our laws. Despite Bob Hawke's legacy, she would be using these powers to really absolve the federal government of any environmental responsibility for approving projects that could significantly damage our natural icons. Uh, there appeared to be uh, no evidence based to support this decision, and yet all we had was the Business Council of Australia making claims that somehow there was duplication in the system. Now, I want to come to those claims because, sadly, upon examination, they bear absolutely no weight. And I say sadly is because what a disappointment that a government has taken such a drastic policy decision with absolutely no evidence base to back it up. Now, the business community have claimed there's duplication here, but the fact of the matter remains is we've already exercised those parts of the law that allow assessment processes at the state level to be accredited. That is, developers don't need to do two sets of documents. They just do one set of documents under those state laws, and then those documents get sent to the federal government, who apply a different test, who look for different things, and then give the approval or a refusal—wish there was more of those, but there hasn't been many—or place conditions on the development. So any duplication that might have existed in the system was fixed about five years ago with agreements between the Commonwealth and most of the states and territories—all of them, in fact, although one's now lapsed but will soon be renegotiated. So any of that duplication has actually already been fixed, and if there's improvements to be made to that process, fine, we'll consider those. We've got no problem with that. What I do object to is the Business Council claiming that there's duplication at that approval stage when they know full well that actually it's at that earlier assessment stage. And what I object to is the government not requiring some proper evidence to back up those claims before it said, oh yes, Business Council, we'll simply do your bidding. Um, I, the Prime Minister, who railed against these very provisions when John Howard brought in these laws, will now use those very sections to opt the federal government completely out of protecting the environment and leave it up to the states. Now, I want to explain why it is that we're so concerned about the states being in charge of our national environment. Uh, perhaps being from Queensland, um, Queenslanders won't need me to spell out just how disastrous Campbell Newman has been since he took office uh, for our national environment, but I want to list the things that Campbell Newman has done, and I'll then uh, talk about some of the, other, uh, the record of some of the other state governments to show these are the last people that you want in charge of nationally significant and internationally significant environmental assets. Uh, so Campbell Newman, in his short time as Queensland Premier, has managed to say that he will 
repeal our protection for pristine, free-flowing rivers, that is, repeal our wild river laws, despite the wishes of traditional owners, the vast majority of them, who say they want those, those protections for their rivers retained. So he's going to do away with protection for rivers um, and let the big miners um, and dams go in on our last remaining free-flowing rivers. Our coastal protection laws, he repealed those shortly after taking office. Uh, now this is the same guy who, when asked about protecting the Great Barrier Reef, said, well, Queensland's in the coal business, so naturally he's going to be repealing any laws that might um, put the brakes on that. And of course his, his deputy premier famously said he thought the reef was really a bit overdone, the concern was overdone. So it's clear uh, the perspective on the Great Barrier Reef by um, Premier Newman and Deputy Premier Sini. So that's wild rivers laws and coastal laws. Unfortunately, the, the story doesn't stop there. We've had the ban on uranium mining in Queensland lifted by Campbell Newman, a 20-year ban put in place for very good reason. And when we've just seen the second anniversary of the Fukushima uh, disaster, who would want our uranium to be contributing to any such disaster in future? And yet that's what's on the books under Campbell Newman, lifting that uranium mining ban. Uh, it's not the only ban he's lifted. Shale oil mining is back on the agenda now in Queensland, effectively coastal strip mining along that very reef coast that the uh, LNP government thinks is, is overblown um, and be, uh, repeating that Queensland is simply in the coal business. Indeed, it is in the fossil fuel business. Uh, so wild rivers, coastal protection, lifting the shale oil ban, lifting the uranium mining ban, but it doesn't stop there, Acting Deputy President. Uh, approximately three weeks ago, we now have um, the ban on native forest logging lifted in Queensland. Now, this is after a long and um, tripartisan approach to negotiating the end of native forest logging in Queensland. This is where the state government, the environment groups and the industry themselves got together to say, look, this industry is on its knees, let's phase it out, it's not good for the environment, here's $250 million. Um, industry players, let's transition to plantation forestry and save our native forests in Queensland. Everyone agreed to that. The agreement was about um, halfway through its 30-year lifespan. That was a 30-year phase-out. We're about halfway through that, and all of a sudden, Mr. Mr. Campbell Newman has now just simply ripped up that agreement. Hasn't said anything about whether that money needs to be paid back to the Queensland taxpayer. Um, and hasn't said anything about whether he'll now let the mining industry go into those forest reserves, although his environment minister has implied that. So we have a clear agenda of destruction of Queensland's environment and the removal of any of the environment protections that Queensland had by this government, uh, this state government. They are the last people that you want in charge of our nationally significant icons, our world heritage areas, our internationally significant wetlands, our threatened species um, that are at risk of extinction. And that's just Queensland. It doesn't stop there. People will be familiar with the New South Wales government's agenda, state government's agenda, of opening up our national parks to shooters which simply beggars belief, given the danger to human life, let alone the ecological impacts of massive noise and disruption on these areas, which are meant to be there to protect biodiversity and protect those natural icons. Uh, I'm afraid it uh, doesn't stop there. Of course, we had the Victorian government wanting to put cows in the Alpine National Park. Now, the federal minister in that case did step in and was able to say, sorry, that's not acceptable, um, I'm going to use my powers to stop that. Well, that might be the last time those powers are able to be used. Unless this bill goes through to stop this government or future governments handing off their approval powers, the federal minister simply won't be able to stop actions like that in future. This is serious business here. We have at risk 30 years of environmental protection that has been built up to save our world heritage icons, to save our precious threatened species. The problem being, of course, is that those laws are already not strong enough to do the job. So why on earth are we weakening them even further and giving them away to cowboys like Campbell Newman uh, and like the New South Wales and Victorian premiers? It simply makes no sense and it flies in the face of 30 years of the Labor tradition of having the Commonwealth play a role in protecting the environment, which is why we were so dismayed when the Business Council was so easily able to get the Prime Minister to say, sure, she'll use these provisions, she'll hand off those powers. Uh, now, of course, that all unfolded last year. We then had the December COAG meeting and, of course, the Business Council love-in that happens the day before COAG now, um, again an initiative of this government. 
Uh, and there appeared to be some pause that had been put in place. It was very unclear. There were some reporters who were tipped off and who covered it that day, but the communique itself that came out of that COAG meeting left the door wide open. It said, OK, um, we're going to have another look at this issue, but states should come back at the next COAG meeting and come to us with a more uniform proposal. So my point is here, uh, uh, Acting Deputy President, these, this handoff of power is not off the table. The Gillard government has not ruled it out. They've simply said to states, gee, it was going to be a bit of a dog's breakfast. Some of you wanted some powers, others wanted others. This is going to make it complicated and we just want to deliver business certainty, never mind environmental protection. So you better go back and come with a cleaner proposal, one that's a bit more harmonious and uniform, and then we'll give you everything you want because the Business Council tells us to. Uh, so the Prime Minister has not ruled out. This, um, this reform, for want of a better word, because basically it's a massive backward step and it takes us back 30 years in environmental protection. And my concern is that Mr Tony Abbott, um, repeated by the opposition again this week, have confirmed that they will use these powers in the EPBC Act to hand off federal responsibility to state governments. There's no doubt about that. Clearly there's uncertainty about whether the government now will. They're not ruling it out, but who knows what they'll do. The opposition have said they will use these powers. They can't wait to use these powers. It was John Howard that put these powers in place in the first place. So we have a situation where we have a window with this parliament to make a change for the future that will protect our national environment. We have a chance here with the parliament as it currently is to take these sections out of our national laws and make sure that the federal government will always have to give that final tick on damaging developments in world, heri world heritage areas, in developments that might send a species to extinction. We can make sure the federal government will always have that role by passing this bill. It remains to be seen what the government and the opposition will do, but all indications in the Senate report into this bill um, which I might say is an excellent report that then leads to some bizarrely unrelated recommendations. One could almost surmise that um, folk on the committee agreed with this bill but felt politically they weren't able to back it, but I'll leave that for the commentators to speculate on. Uh, we now know the opposition will use these powers. We have a window where we can make sure that Tony Abbott can't trash our national environment and can't leave it up to his state cronies um, to run our world heritage areas into the ground to send our species to extinction. It is incumbent upon this Labor government to act and, and work with the Greens, support this bill and protect our national environment into the future. There is this one chance to Abbott-proof our national environmental laws. If the government doesn't take this chance and if they refuse to support this bill, they will be complicit in allowing either themselves or Tony Abbott's government, should the polls bear, bear out on election day. What, what, Senator. Mr yes. Tony Abbott, Thank if that's the correction, much. I beg your pardon. Uh, the Labor government will be complicit in allowing either itself or Mr Tony Abbott's government, should he form government after the election, to hand off these powers to state governments and to abandon our national environment to the whim of state governments, who won't act in the national interest. That's not their job. Of course they won't. And they are uh, traditionally seen, and, and evidence bears it out, to be much closer to developers um, and to the big miners, although, of course, I'm afraid that contention could also be put to the two big parties here. So, uh, Mr Acting Deputy President, I urge all senators to think long and hard about their position on this bill, and I would be so disappointed, as I think the Australian public would be. Anyone who's vis visited the reef and knows how beautiful it is and how important and how fragile. Anyone who's visited um, the beautiful forests of Tasmania, um, seen the wonderful koalas which are now um, nationally threatened, experienced the beauty and the joy of our national environment, those folk would be so disappointed that politics might stop this bill going through. When we have a chance to actually make sure our national environment will remain able to be protected by our national government, as folk in the public expect that it should and would be, when we have this one chance, is politics really going to get in the way of a good outcome? Uh, perhaps I'm naive to think that it's even possible that anything other than that might happen. But we Greens stand here saying, please, you have a chance to stand to protect our national environment. Please take this chance. 
remove those powers that would allow the federal minister to simply get out of the way, give the green light to state governments to trash the environment as much as they can. Um, what an absolutely um, dismaying and depressing outcome that could be. I want to quickly um, touch upon some of the reassurances that um, the Labor government put. They said, oh, it's fine if the states are in charge. It doesn't really matter who makes the decision because we'll have standards in place and they'll have to adhere to the standards. Well, I'm afraid coming at this issue as an environmental lawyer who practised in this area for 10 years, I have seen the standards that exist already for that assessment phase, and I've seen how they've been breached on several occasions, not least by our Queensland Premier, um, to the extent that, in fact, the federal minister had to step back in and take that assessment process off Campbell Newman for the Alpha coal mine, Gina Reinhart's big mine, which, sadly, the federal minister then himself approved anyway. So we've seen that the states will not comply with standards. There is nothing in the standards that obliges compliance. I ask this very question, both in estimates and in the Senate inquiry, what's the guarantee that these standards will be complied with? Where is the reassurance? And I'll simply refer to that part of the law saying, oh, the federal minister can revoke the whole arrangement if one person has breached one part of it. Well, do you think that's likely to happen? That's certainly not what's happened so far in those assessment agreements. It's an incredibly unlikely outcome. What is, what is far more likely is that you will see the state government undermining those standards, letting development through that will trash world heritage areas, send threatened species to extinction, um, ride roughshod over wetland areas and other important international icons, um, and the Commonwealth won't be able to lift a finger to do it. So this is such an important bill, and again I urge senators in this place um, to search their consciences and think about the legacy that is at risk here if these sections remain in the law. Um, and allow a future Abbott government, or indeed even this government, if the Business Council breathes down their neck again, as it is wanting to do, um, to use these powers to hand it off. I, wanna, uh, I want to mention um, and thank all of the people so far who have supported the Greens' campaign to protect our national environmental laws, the laws that protect the places we all love. I want to thank the environment groups, and I want to thank everyone who went to the trouble of making a submission in support of this bill, because the vast majority of the submissions to our inquiry did support this bill. People know what the risks are if we don't pass this bill. Um, they fear Campbell Newman being in charge of the reef with no check and balance at the federal level, and rightly so. So I want to thank those folk for putting their views on the record. And I want to urge uh, senators to actually really listen to the evidence. We had some very compelling evidence presented in the Senate inquiry, um, including, I might add, from the Environment Department themselves, who said at one point, uh, who confirmed um, that the Minerals Council and the Business Council actually had not provided evidence about duplication and delay. They'd given some anecdotes, but there was no solid evidence that had been provided. Now, that was a really shocking admission because it showed that the government was prepared to adopt a policy without any evidentiary basis, without any demonstrated need for a change. And, and frankly, it showed just how in the pocket of big business this government is. And of course, we know that any future government from the other side of politics would be equally, if not more, in that same pocket. So we have the evidence that was presented so cogently to this Senate inquiry from all of the environment groups, from economists, um, from lawyers, all saying this is really risky to hand off these powers to state governments. They could do serious damage. There's not enough guarantees that any standards will be complied with. There's a possible loss of public rights. This whole idea is insane. Um, please don't go ahead. No one ever thought these provisions would be used. For heaven's sake, get rid of them so that we can always have a national government with that oversight role to protect our international icons. Uh, again, we've seen the Business Council, the Minerals Council, making unfounded claims, seeking to get exactly what they want. It remains to be seen whether the government will themselves still pursue this policy outcome. If they fail to vote for this bill, they are leaving open that option of either themselves or a Tony Abbott government uh, using these powers. And I'm afraid that will simply lead the Australian public to the conclusion that only the Greens are prepared to stand up to protect our national environment, to protect our world heritage areas like the Great Barrier Reef and the wonderful Tasmanian forests, uh, to protect our nationally threatened species like the beautiful Leadbeater's possum in Victoria, like the koala, which is sadly now nationally threatened. The public will know that only the Greens are serious about actually protecting our environment and that we are the only ones recognising that in order to have a healthy economy and a healthy community, you need a healthy environment. And that requires 
provides proper federal oversight of damaging developments that stand to threaten these natural icons that could underpin a sustainable economy and give us all great joy for generations to come. So I look forward to the debate and I certainly look forward to hearing hopefully a change of position from the two big parties, although I'm um, sadly not expecting to hear that. Um, thanks, Mr Acting Deputy President, and I look forward to the debate on this really important bill.